Hi, greetings guys. Uh, this is your pre-algebra kind of personalized video to get started with. And I do recognize that probably most of you um, had maybe math lab um, before you took this class. Some may have tested right into this class. Um, and then most likely too, you had different math teachers up to this point. Uh, we are kind of splitting our math now, whereas before I was teaching only math and uh, we had some other needs, so I started teaching some PE and music and film. And so usually I teach one to two math classes now a term. Uh, this term I'm actually teaching three. So um, anyway, I wanted to kind of go over my expectations so that you know what to look forward to through the term, because obviously there's gonna be some differences if you had a different math teacher. And hopefully we can do away with any fears of that or. Uh, just kind of go through and, and lay out what we'll be doing and how to turn things in and uh, that way there'll be no questions on that going forward. The math itself, obviously we're getting a little bit deeper, um, you know, going past where math lab is. Pre-algebra is, is a funny term because it really, schools, regular high schools have started introducing this younger and younger and earlier classes. So there's even things that pop up that you can consider pre-algebra even in, in grade school. So that's become a trend now in regular schools. Technically, you know, pre-algebra usually was seventh, eighth grade, right before you got into high school to start uh, algebra. But like I said, that has changed now over time of what that is. So we actually kind of do a mixture of that we're going into some of the basics of things that even you could say are some algebra things but it's so it can set you up for the uh, a good way, set you up for the next classes that start. So whether you take geometry or algebra or applied math, this kind of gets you ready for anything you'll see in that to, to have the foundation and the, and the um, kind of basic principles of that before you go on to those classes, okay? Um, it is a half credit uh, elective. It is not a math credit, the same way with math lab. Um, just I wanted to lay that out there. You know, if you have questions about that, you can email me. Like I said in that first video, you've got your uh, stream and your classwork tab and your people tab. And on that people tab is my name at the top uh, and then your classmates. And so you can directly message there if you need to. Um, but yes, this class and Math Lab, because they're not technical high school classes, are half credit of elective but you have to take them if you test it in that area and we find out too math is one of those subjects that if you've not seen it in a while you kind of you know it's you need that refresher course thankfully they're only eight weeks so within eight weeks you're ready to go and kind of go on to the next thing to start taking those classes that are math credits uh, full math credits okay whether it be algebra geometry or applied math from that point so that, that gives you an idea. Uh, I, I like to tell my students, you know, we had um, uh, one of my first classes I taught that kind of goes into the background. I shared a little, little bit of graduation. That I, I'm always proud of what you guys are doing. And so I enjoy, you know, seeing that growth right away. And um, I, when I first started teaching here, it was night classes. I was, I was teaching at a high school as well, so I was doing both. And I would come up and teach nights here in Springfield. And I had a class right away that was math lab. Had them at night class. Within eight weeks, we finished and moved on to pre-algebra. And within eight weeks, we were in algebra. And so we had only been together for about 20 weeks. And we were doing a problem that took up most of the board. And all the students were doing it and they were going through. And I said, hey, let's stop for a second. And realize that only, you know, a couple months ago, uh, three or four months ago, you guys we're, you know, at math lab doing, you know, that level of math work. And I said, now look where you're at. So it happens, stay at it, uh, you'll, you'll get it. Just keep up with those daily assignments and, and um, we'll go from there. Now, pre-algebra, there is a little bit more to cover than math lab. There's, we've always said that pre-algebra is our really condensed class. We're trying to cover a lot of different things. So it is important that you stay up on those daily assignments. Okay, I highly encourage that. Speaking of that, most of my daily assignments are from 10 to 20 points, um, depending on the size, what's going on. And so those daily assignments, 
Like I said in that first video, they will post every day on your stream. Most likely it'd be a video of me teaching or maybe one of a, of a internet source that I use that you can watch um, that will go with what I taught on it. And so you'll watch that. And most, you know, if it's my video that I'm teaching, you usually have problems at the end. Sometimes I'll, I'll post a picture of problems and that'll be on the stream. Then on the classwork tab, okay, there will be a posting that will say, let's say it's like June 10th and it'll be June 10th, daily assignment, turn in spot. And I usually try to put uh, what it was. Uh, it's a lot quicker to type this, I'm just noticing. But I'll put like maybe integers, okay? And we'll talk about what that is here in a second. So I'll, June 10th, daily assignment, turn in spot, integers. That way you know which one it is it goes with the June 10th stream announcement that I made with the video, and this will be blank, okay, because the, the problems will be in the video or they'll be on the, on the stream that I post. This classwork one that you turn it in will be blank. There'll be nothing there because you're turning in your work. So what you do is you click on it, and there's the plus sign that you'll see that you can add either a document or you can add a photo. And so that's how I ask you to turn it in. I give you the option. Um, some like to do it on paper and I, when we're here, I love, you know, our students usually work on paper and do it, work it out that way. So if you do it on paper and write them down, you can just take a photo of that and upload your photo of your work. Or if you want to use a Google doc, you can click on add a Google doc and you can type up your answers. What makes that kind of hard is we've got symbols. Now, you know, the math lab, usually it was just numbers, but now we're going to have some symbols in some of the math exponents, uh, you know, negative numbers, those kind of things. So it's a little hard sometimes to use typing. So if you want to take the photo and upload it that way, you can. If you get used to doing it on a Google Doc and can use those symbols and do that, that's fine as well. Okay, so that's where you'll turn those in. They're usually 10 to 20 points. Um, if you turn it in late, I do accept it, but I caution you, I do take the late deduction. And um, like I said, it's hard to keep up, especially with all that we cover. You know, you'll wanna make sure you're, because math builds on itself. So if you, you know, miss a, a week and then try to jump in the next week and see where we're at, usually you have to go back and watch the first week because we build on what we learned before. Math kind of does that. Whereas like history, if you're learning about maybe World War II, or so, let's say you're learning about the Civil War and you go to learn about World War II, they're not necessarily dependent on each other. You can draw parallels, but that's a math term. But you uh, don't necessarily need one to learn about the other. Whereas math, that's very difficult because usually you have to know this basic before you move on to this step and so on. So I encourage you to stay up on those. Now I put here, I do not grade them individually. Um, same with when we're in class. Um, I have usually my classes are, are some of the larger classes just because what I teach, PE is usually required, so a lot of students have to take that. Um, and math, usually everybody has to take math. So I have usually close to over 100 students each term. Uh, there's no possible way that I could uh, have the time to necessarily go through and grade every assignment individually. Now, I know that sounds bad, but um, it, like if you do the math on it, I've done the math on it, where there's just not a, enough time in the of a day to even spend five minutes on each one, much less to spend to go through and grade each one. So I do read through them, check them, make sure you're getting the main concepts and check that you did them uh, to, to give you that score. But then usually by the next day, I post me explaining the answers. So you, are, so you can then take that and grade it and you will have them graded, okay? You will have the answers each time. So you're not left in the dark, like did I get this right or wrong? You will know and you will be able to see. And plus too, it kind of gives more than just, hey, you missed this one, you missed this one, or change this. It actually gives you an explanation where I, I work the problem out and you can see where you made your mistakes. I have to do that as a group, meaning I post that so that everybody can look at once and check your own but I do the same thing in class. So if we were in class and you've seen this before, I hand back your papers, we go through it and you check your own and you kind of check and see what you missed. So that's where, you know, I'm checking that first thing for your score, 
to just make sure you got the main concepts that you did them, that you're spending that time that you did them all, you tried them all. And then, uh, like I said, you individually grade the next day or following day to look through and say, I missed these, this is what I need to fix. And so that everybody, I can maximize that time of everybody gets their checks, everybody gets a full explanation, but it's done all at once. Same thing, like I said, if we're in class, I hand it back and we all go through it um, and can go through it. Feel free to ask questions though, you know, to write on each assignment, say, hey, I, I still didn't get this one or something. I can respond with email and work with you personally that way, okay? Um, and just, you know, keep in mind, I, I, it takes a little while sometimes, you know, if I've got several coming in. So keep that in mind. Um, I want to kind of, these are our main points that we'll be going through. Now, you, I do not expect you to know what these are yet. Uh, you may, I, I do this just so it kind of brings back memories, uh, wonderful math memories, right? We all love math. But, oh yeah, I remember seeing that. And so you kind of have an idea where we're heading in the class and to kind of just lay out, hey, we're going to get through it, um, that you can see kind of where we're heading. And so these are the main things. Now there's a few others that we kind of mix in with this. Um, like one example is we'll do distribution when we do order of operations. So there's a few other like topics that we cover, but these are our main goals here. Integers, basically we can break it down that we're working with positive and negative numbers. And that's different than math lab because in math lab you did, you always worked with positive numbers. Okay, we do start to mix in what happens when those numbers are negative. This is real world application. Um, in, in real world, you have positive things and you have negative things, especially when you're doing a bank account or you, you know, you're working with numbers that aren't always positive that, that you get to add to, but you also are going to have negative. Sports has this, you know, if you think about football field and you get penalized, they do negative yards. And so uh, it's in our everyday life, but we're going to really break down. There's a lot of rules involved um, that really help and make it easier to always keep it straight to always know where you're going with positive and negative numbers, okay? We're gonna cover some exponent things. So exponents are those little numbers, uh, remember you see above written up here, like written above the number, okay? So those are also called powers. So we are gonna cover some of those rules, what happens when you use exponents. Um, order of operations, you may remember hearing about PIMA or PIMDOS. Uh, or some even say Jim Doss, that's another one. And we'll cover all that, but it's how, what order you do, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. There was an internet trend that here, kind of like the, I think there was one of like, is the dress blue or black? Um, a couple others I've seen, but there's been a math one that hit that some people solved it this way, some people solved it this way, and which one's right. That one I will contend is a poorly worded question. I always respond, because soon as a math thing goes online, I have all these students write me, hey, what do you think, Mr. Eden? And uh, I'm like, I'm not falling into that game. The dress is, no, I'm just kidding. But I'm like, I usually respond with, well, for one, the question is poorly written. And that can happen. Uh, the way they put it in the parentheses, as far as the number outside, really technically, most questions you'll see will have a sign there so that you can avoid that confusion. And so, um, you know, that's one, but then if you technically follow the PEMDAS rules, then I usually tell them what happens with the answer, okay? So we cover that. That's like, you know, if you've got seven minus six times two plus three divided by one or something like that. Uh, you see those numbers and you say, oh, well, what order do you do them in? That's what we're doing is, is there's an order to do this in, okay? Because whether you do it or not, We'll change the answer. I'll give you an example. If you just go left to right, you're going to get one times you know, seven minus six is one times two is two plus three is five divided by one is five. Okay. Well, that's not the correct answer. The correct answer was you should do this first. Now I'm not expecting you. We're going to learn it, but I just want to give you an idea. This is first in this. So it's 12. You do this next. So it's three. So seven minus 12 is negative five plus three is negative two. So that gives you an amp, uh, a kind of an idea of where we're doing the correct order of operations. But we really break it down, we spend time on it. So don't panic right there. Even though I did that, um, we go through that. Okay, variables, that is your letters, okay? This is the part that everybody loves in math. 
um, when we put letters in math, and I say that with just a little bit of a wink and a wry smile when I say that because everybody hates it. But I really, this is where I focus mainly in pre-algebra because this will help you as you go into the other math classes, really break down why we use letters in math. There is a good reason, and you will see, hopefully, you'll just be like, oh, yes, that is a good reason. And so there is a good reason why we use letters in math. It just represents something that's unknown, okay? So if it's, you know, a quick example of that is we've always learned problems that the answer is the unknown. Like what is seven plus three? Here's the unknown. So there's no need to put a letter there because we know we're answering. But what happens when you know the answer, but maybe you're missing the middle part, one of the middle numbers? And so we can't always use a blank, and especially if there's more than one unknown, we can't use two blanks. So we have to use something to represent what is missing there. And that's why we use letters, whether it be X or A or whatever. And we will eventually learn, hey, we know that seven plus three is 10. So what we're solving here is what's missing? What do we need to find to give us 10? Well, it's three. And so that's what we go for. And that's, so I break that down and really work with variables. And then we move on to equations, which means we put those variables in what we just did right there and work out equations. And they get a little bit longer than that and a little bit difficult. And we learn some of the tricks of the trade to be able to do equations. And that will help you go into those next math classes, okay? Now, like I said, those daily assignments, keep up with those. Uh, they will be, you know, me teaching these things or some internet help with that. And so we'll go through and you'll be doing those problems and turning them in that way. Your test will be pretty much the same thing. Usually the test, I take a photo of the problems that we covered in that unit and you'll look at the photo, it'll have the questions on there and you do your work on either paper or Google Doc and turn it into the turn in spot on the classwork tab, okay? Looking forward to it, we'll have a good class and now I'm gonna step around the camera and be the man behind the camera so you still hear my voice and I'm gonna hit stop. So the video is gonna stop and I've not hit stop yet. So you still hear me talking.